We are here today to consider the impact of government spending on our economy. We're fortunate to have two world-renowned economists to offer their testimony on the matter. Here we are, peace out, great recession. Thanks to me, as you see, we're not in a depression. Recovery, destiny, if you follow my lesson, Lord Keynes. Hero- Hi, I'm Nick Gillespie with Reason TV, and today we're talking with Russ Roberts, a professor of economics at George Mason University and the co-creator of the fabulously successful and hugely entertaining, and I hate to say it, edifying Hayek Keynes rap videos. You just released the second one. What's the story of the second Hayek Keynes rap? video. We're focusing in on the role of stimulus spending and we focus in particular at the beginning on World War II. We could have done better had we only spent more. Too bad that only happens when there's a world war. You can carp all you want about stats and regression. Do you deny World War II cut short the depression? Wow. Certainly this is what you hear all the time. The spending effort for World War II ended the Great Depression. Uh, why is that wrong? Hayek's response is, wow, one data point. You're jumping for joy. Last time I checked, wars only destroyed. There was no multiplier. Consumption just shrank as we used scarce resources for every new tank. Pretty perverse to call that prosperity. Ration meat, ration butter, a life of austerity. Keynesian idea is there's all this slack around, so you can just spend with no cost. In fact, worth spending takes real resources out of the economy. Right. If every worker was staffed in the army and fleet, we'd have full employment and nothing to eat. In the U.S., there was a boom after World War II. There was. Where does that come from, if not from, you know, a kind of pent-up demand or, you know, uh, that the Keynesian magic got the gas tank uh, Well, it took a long again. time, I guess, right. in that story, because again, yeah. the 40s, in the early part of the 40s, it wasn't so good right. in England or the United States or Germany. It had a huge increase in government spending that somehow didn't stimulate a thing. What happened actually in the late years of the war, 43 onward, all the Keynesians, as we say in the song, cried disaster. Yet the economy thrived and grew faster. They looked at the Keynesian multiplier, they saw government spending falling dramatically, which it did. All these unemployed workers, how are they going to find jobs? Well, they found jobs. The economy did great. And people say, well, well, then if it wasn't the war, what was it? I think it was leaving things alone. The economy's not a car. There's no engine to stall. No expert can fix it. There's no it at all. The economy's us. We don't need a mechanic. Put away the wrenches. The economy's organic. I think it's great in the video where you're talking about like there aren't knobs that you can turn up or down. But nowadays we're struggling with the after effects or the continuing effects yeah. of stimulus spending. Some people say, look, if it wasn't for stimulus spending, things would have been far worse. And other people are saying, and I think you and I agree on this, if we hadn't spent that, maybe we'd be out of the mess we're in. Uh, how, you know, is there a way to have a definitive end to this battle or is it really kind of two faiths clashing? Well, I think it's a little awkward when you have really smart Nobel Prize winning economists say, if we'd only spent two trillion instead of close to one trillion, we'd have been fine by now. Others saying, well, we should have spent zero. What does that tell you? It tells you it's not science. That's the first thing it tells you. It tells you that despite, oh, 80 years of trying to understand how the macroeconomy works in the face of big recessions and sometimes a depression, we don't really understand it. And again, I think Hayek has the right thing to say about this dispute, which is in his 1974 uh, Nobel Prize winning lecture, The Pretense of Knowledge, uh, he says macroeconomics is not really ever going to be solved. The lesson I've learned is how little we know. The world is complex, not some circular flow. The economy's not a class you can master in college. To think otherwise is the pretense of knowledge. Hayek's main message is, let, it's not even let things alone, but let's see a lot of different ways of doing yeah. things. Can that ever really be successful as a kind of uh, mass gu- a guide to mass society? You're right, there's a basic fundamental distrust of leaving things alone, and the person says, I can fix it, always has an advantage, even if he's using uh, the wrong tool to fix what's broken. So my hope is that things like the internet have given people an appreciation of emergent order to solve problems, and I think Hayek's getting, he's, he's on the rise. What's your hope for the success of the video? The first one has millions of views, Uh, The second one got to 200,000 views in basically a day, and it's going to continue to go upwards. But, you know, what's success coming out of these videos? Well, a couple things. One is my favorite YouTube comment on the first one was, who's this Hayek guy and why haven't I heard of him? So we're trying to get Hayek into the debate. We want him to have a place at the table. Uh, John and I are both, John Popola, the co-creator, and I are just extremely passionate about letting a little voice for liberty be heard besides the top-down approach of the Keynesians. The second goal is educational at a different level. Uh, One of the most gratifying things we've had from the first video 
is the uh, schools that are using it, uh, high schools and universities around the world, uh, especially high schools. Here's kids who are trying to get their first taste of economics. It's a wonderful thing. You've been at the economics game for a long time. You're, you're well known for being a, uh, a really strong narrative storyteller about economics. Do you think economists are getting better at kind of showing the way that it actually affects humans as opposed to economics being merely the province of, of a bunch of supply and demand diagrams? Well, I think supply and demand diagrams would be great. Uh, I think it's more, the things that makes that concerns me more is it's the province of a bunch of equations that are extremely abstract about all kinds of other stuff. There's a fight in the academy, and those of us who like narrative and who like intuition and who like the real world struggle in competition against the, the people who say it's, it's, it's like physics, but we use different, you know, different variables. I don't think it's much like physics at all. I think the use of the tools of physics, as Hayek would point out, is scientism, not science. It gives you the illusion you're doing science, which I think is worse than uh, admitting you don't know, how, know what you're doing. Russ Roberts, co-creator of uh, the latest Hayek Keynes video. Uh, I want to thank you for talking to us. For Reason TV, I'm Nick Collette. Which way should we choose?